Welcome everyone to this special edition of All Things Automotive. We'll have our friends from Lucid Motors, a luxury EV car company with awesome tech and a big data platform. And uh, what's better than that? Well, it's truly a fascinating time in the industry with developments moving fast and furious. Yeah, a lot of insights. And uh, let's get going with this special episodes of All Things Automotive. I'm Dean Phillips, Worldwide Tech Lead for Automotive at AWS. Hello, everybody. I'm Stefano Marzani, Worldwide Tech Lead for Autonomous Driving at AWS. Joined a couple of years ago. I think you joined a little bit Yeah, before. it's been almost five years, which I can't believe it's gone so fast. But yeah. being from the Motor City, we like fast cars. And I have a passion for cars. I love technology. And I can't think of a better industry to be in at this time. Yeah, I'm originally from the Motor Valley in Italy, but we share similar background and similar passions, right? That's right. Motor Valley, land of good food, powerful engines, but loving computer right now, I'm in the Silicon Valley, right? To try to get the best between cars and computers. That's right. But we're really excited to have on our customer Lucid today to talk about this beautiful new vehicle, yeah. the Lucid Air. It's the hottest EV brand on the market right now. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's not just a car. They are trying to build a whole ecosystem of things around the sustainable mobility. And that's pretty awesome. Well, let's get under the hood with Lucid. At Amazon Web Services, we are truly blessed to work with all of the great automotive companies in the world. And today, we're really excited to talk to Lucid to hear all about the new Lucid Air, the longest range EV on the market. Yeah, it's impressive and it's a winning vehicle. We just learned today that it's, uh, it got the Motor Trend Vehicle of the Year prize. So it's, it's really awesome, right? So can't wait to hear more about that. Absolutely. So maybe we can welcome our guests from the winning team, okay, from the winning it. company, right? So welcome, Sam. Thank you so much. For Thanks with for us having today. me. Yeah, welcome. Seat, please. Welcome to the set. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Sam? How'd you get started with Lucid? My name is Sam Jaffari. Um, I started two and a half years ago mm -hmm. uh, in my adventure to find my new challenge. Um, EV is my my personal passion for a long longest time, uh, and data is my thing. So, these two married yeah. and Lucid wow. was a perfect job. So. Talking about Lucid, I mean, it's a relatively new company. Two and a half years in the lifetime of Lucid is probably, you know. A long time. Yeah, yeah. a generation or more. So tell us, what's it like to work at Lucid? Uh, at Lucid, you build what you see. Wow. You're contributing to the society by the sustainable uh, transportation. And it's cutting edge technology. It means that you're pushing, you're basically tickling your part of brain that it needs some uh, technology or, or nerdy side of it. At the same time, you contributed something that's greater good of all of us. So combination of these two, uh, and obviously the culture is very engineering driven. The, uh, the efficiency, which comes to our range as well, right. is everywhere in the company. So I always try to tell my, uh, my friends to encourage them to join me. Yeah. So when they tell them these, wow, amazing. That's cool. You get to combine all those cool things as part of the culture of the company. You're doing something for the greater good at the same time. Absolutely. Super, super awesome. Grand vision, yeah. really. Grand yeah. vision. But let's talk about the, the vehicle, right? So Lucid announced uh, very recently customer delivery of the Lucid Air, right? So that the first uh, model you are putting out there. It's an amazing vehicle. I love it. Really, it's uh, fantastic, luxurious. It's uh, really yeah. amazing. And even the technology inside, that's mm -hmm. really fantastic. What makes it special from your point of view? Uh, there, there are a few things with those. That, uh, obviously, there are numbers, uh, the specs, as, as, as they call them. Um, if you look, uh, well, the, the one that we actually uh, delivered to customers were um, Lucid, uh, limited edition of Lucid uh, Air Dream Performance, mm -hmm. which has got 1,111 uh, 11 horsepower. Wow. The other one is Lucid <laughs> Range, amazing. which is the uh, which can go 520 miles per single charge. It's uh, 700 kilometers, right? More or less. I think more, more <laughs> or less. Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, We're in the 700 States. plus. Leave it to the Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Bring in the metric system. Yeah. Uh, uh, the whole vehicle is built in US. 
Wow. We have uh, the state-of-the-art uh, Greenfield EV factory in Arizona. Um, and uh, this is what we are so proud of because it's purpose EV built. Wow. Factory. Built from scratch, if I remember correctly, right? From dirt, yeah. basically, yeah. put right. it this way. Um, and, uh, and obviously, the uh, the whole vehicle is software defined vehicle, as, as they call mm-hmm. it, or um, STV. Yeah. Um, equal partnership between hardware and software that makes this car next generation. And something that I'm taking pride on is that. For us, this vehicle is data-defined vehicle as well. Oh, yeah, I love that part. <laughs> this is what we put lots of effort on. And right now, data is integral part of vehicle development. Means that if you take the data away, probably speed of development will going to decrease. I, I don't want to put number into it, and then our hardware people get the. <laughs> well, you, you talked before about how the engineers get really mad if you don't make their data available. Absolutely, and this is helps with rapid prototyping. You can just build quickly tests, you can live monitor, you can drag and drop, you can, you can uh, look at d- uh, data in different ways. And there are hundreds and thousands of data points that you can look at the vehicle and we made live available to the engineering team to look what, what is happening inside the vehicle. Yeah, what an amazing culture, you know. Uh-huh. That, and that's one of the factor. Probably you get uh, 500 plus. Not everybody miles. has that flexibility yeah. and uh, have their data process so ironed out. Yeah. So that's fantastic yeah. to hear. Absolutely. Thanks to you guys, AWS. You guys have helped us a lot. Oh, yeah, and uh, you know, I don't sure. think we are just talking about test fleet or just a few vehicles. It's the whole <laughs> fleet sending data continuously. Yeah, production, right? test vehicles. Yeah. So it's just a lot of data. So how do you have and how do you manage and approach this problem of ingesting, managing, quality controlling, all, all this data and using it? We approach this, the whole data problem holistically. Now, we have product data and the company data and the non-product data will be sales, finance, accounting that we, all, we have seen in a different part. These are a small portion of our work. We focus on uh, uh, product data, which is a big chunk of the work. The size goes to petabyte and exabyte of the uh-huh. data. Now, we broke down the whole approach to three different layers. Uh, this data streaming, processing, mm-hmm. storage, data lake, be part of it. Then we move from this step to another step or level we call the converting data to information. This is mm-hmm. where we post-processing, data aggregation, data monitoring, reporting. Cataloging cataloging, dashboarding. And then we take this one to the next layer. We, call, we convert information to insights. And that's where the data science, AI, machine learning, uh, data pattern recognition comes in place. When, when, we, when we offer the data to our customers, we just don't want to just dump something. It's so, okay, this is go figure yeah. out. We make it data as a service. Mm. We yeah. offer them tools, best practices, the standards, and we, want, we basically make it available. If you know your data, there should be no problem for you to, uh, to access and slice and dice and process data. You should only think about what you want to do with data. Uh, again, these are, these are uh, just a high, very high level. I mean, um, yeah. this one, when you go move another layer, you look at the, the, the machine learning of it. These data accumulated for a long time across vehicle, across regions and different conditions. Then you can find a pattern. You can find anomalies. You can you can uh, come up with a model, train it, deploy it, and get the outcome of it. And that's what is makes magic happen. You make your vehicle de- development actually data de- driven. Yeah, that's wow. that's really interesting. I mean, once you start to get all these vehicles on the road that customers have bought, just think of all the things that you can avoid with these you know predictive uh, analytics that can happen. You know, why don't we take a little bit deeper look at it and um, try to understand, you know, how did you develop the architecture and how are you using AWS services and infrastructure? Sure. Um, let me put a step back. I just want to make sure that I put enough emphasis because I spend lots of energy on this. Privacy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So when you come to customer data, uh, privacy is our first priority. Uh, we design and build and spend lots of uh, Taught on how to make the data very uh, reliable and, and access to the right people. 
So we did multiple things. We did we isolated the environment physically. Uh, we created the opt in, opt out, and consent process to make sure everybody wow. aware of what we what we and how we're using the data for, and uh, obviously encrypting and anonymizing data for further privacy purposes. In flight and at rest, I would imagine. Yeah. That is correct, yeah. Um, most of the time uh, when we talk about data, because I'm passionate about data, when I'm talking about it, people say, what about privacy? It is built in. Yeah. <laughs> built in, yeah. Cool. Priority zero, as we say, right? <laughs> yes. yeah. Very important. Now, uh, to your question about uh, how we build it. Uh, we built an AWS. Um, it's it's give us the fastest speed and also uh, give us lots of flexibility. Uh, in the diagram, you can see we stream the data. We make sure that we um, obviously cost is is a, is, a, is a factor here. How fast you want to get the data? Uh, data from vehicle will be sent to the cloud. We have a MQTT IoT server mm-hmm. set in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, all of these our architecture is ver- uh, horizontally scalable. We mm-hmm. do Kubernetes. We get yeah. the inherit we inherit the Kubernetes functionality or property of being horizontally scalable. Uh, with services that either have built-in uh, horizontal scalability or we leverage HPA from Kubernetes to basically scale out to our system. Then uh, this sends the data to our uh, message queue, which is which mm-hmm. is Kafka. Then this data will be pulled in. We get the compressed data. We get kind of a binary format because the span is expensive. Uh, we process them, send them back, and we store the data into two different places. One is our enterprise data lake, which built on, uh, we kind of we built it ourselves. Um, I know data lake is a very broad terminology, <laughs> yeah. uh, but in our case, in our interpretation of data lake, we used uh, the leverage technology like Parquet or RC, as mm-hmm. well as S3 as a, as a storage layer, and we use Hive Meta Storage Edge Catalog on the top, and combined with multiple tools that kind of um, uh, created our, our data lake. So we stored there for post-processing, for the science role, but some kind of reporting, dashboarding, and also more of a cross the time, um, let's say, historical data processing. Same copy goes to our uh, time series database. I never thought <laughs> that time series database would be such a, a center of attention uh, because uh, who cares about just millisecond uh, uh, response that yeah. actually lots of people do. <laughs> yeah. In automotive, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so uh, it has become a very helpful tool for engineers to jump in the, uh, in, the, in the dashboard, drag and drop, choose between thousands of signals and data that we have and see exactly to the millisecond level what happened that millisecond and that development car that uh, might have caused some performance problem or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And obviously, at the end, you have the end users uh, that they can get to choose what to look at, what to build. One thing that I found useful and we practice a lot uh, is that training people to be independent. Mm-hmm. So we provide all these tools. We run uh, weekly office hours training to tell them, guys, we have all these tools for you and yeah. help yourself. Obviously, cool. we help them and we create things for them, but we want them to be owner of their their creation. Yeah, that's really awesome, right? And it demonstrates Dean is not just, uh, you know, throwing data, raw data on on some kind of storage. Yeah. It's way more than that, right? So it's really an awesome architecture, awesome explanation. Yeah, stuff that we've seen before with other uh, customers and building similar patterns with their data lakes. Absolutely, and uh, that partially we captured with uh, our own data lake reference architecture version 2. Yeah. It is, again, way more than just uh, raw data stored in sure. a place. It's absolutely more than that. So, absolutely interesting. Thanks for these insights, Sam. And uh, what are and what were some lessons, right? Uh, lessons learned in building all this infrastructure? There have been a lot. It's been a long year. <laughs> we can imagine. I know, it's two and a half years. It feels to me like 20 and yeah. five years or something. If I try to summarize them, uh, we uh, started leveraging open source technology. Right. It helps a lot to customize what we need and tune it to do the way that we want it. Um, getting the hold of that cost runaway train was a big thing. If you don't actively monitor it, it will just go all over the place. Yeah. And the third one is that 
uh, do not trust what uh, all the existing monitoring tells mm, you about AWS networking. <laughs> 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 They're a layer deeper than that that you need to monitor your networking of EC2 and EKS. Uh, we kind of learn in the hard way, but that's what something that I recommend people look at your networking performance with customized monitoring. These are, these are I think, the key factor to make a successful cool. petabyte scale system. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's again a very interesting insight, sure. and uh, we saw some of them, by the way, rightly correct implement in our yeah. well architected framework as principle. So thanks for mentioning them; it's, it's really interesting. And uh, Lucid seems really a cool place, right, yeah, to be fantastic. right now. So it's fantastic. So, and how does the, the future look like for Lucid? Um, I would like to say the future is bright. <laughs> <laughs> seems that way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can talk more about the data side of the, of the, the future Lucid. We just created a foundation. Uh, although we did a lot compared to, uh, to the other side of uh, the, the fence, but to me uh, and to, to the company, we just laid the foundation for data engineering. There are problems which have not been solved, some of them have not been uh, tackled, and there's some problems that are very exciting to solve for me personally. If I can solve that specific problem about the vehicle or, or the mm. one that I drive or similar to that one, uh, it's, for me, it's exciting. So we are tackling those problems. Uh, the, uh, the encouragement from the, from the company, uh, from the leadership that tell us to go and tackle those problems is amazing. So I think we're going to achieve amazing things moving forward. And yeah. what, I, what I can see is that it just go get more exciting from here. Clearly, what you folks have done at Lucid has been fascinating, especially um, hearing about the Motor Trend uh, Car of the Year award. So it's it's pretty obvious that yeah. you guys are breaking breaking the trail. So um, congratulations to you, and thanks so much for coming on today. Yeah. You got to get us in this thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll absolutely. Do it. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait to have the real one, right, yeah. to, to try. Thanks, everyone, for joining this special episode of All Things Automotive with Lucid Motors. Yeah, and the CES is just around the corner, right? That's right. We've got over a dozen demos with customer content partners, so it's really exciting automotive content. Yeah, and just as a reminder, check the previous episodes of All Things Automotive on YouTube and follow the hashtag All Things Automotive on Twitter and LinkedIn. Watch for announcement for the next season of All Things Automotive.